Hey gang, Brad here, and I just want to tell you that now is the perfect time to book the vacation of a lifetime, spending a week with 3,000 other crazy 80s fans on The 80s Cruise. The Royal Caribbean's Explorer of the Seas leaves Miami on March 8, 2020 for seven glorious Caribbean days, with stops in San Juan, St. Thomas, Punta Cana, and Labadee. But the real fun comes from the performances by the B-52s, Brett Michaels, Berlin, Loverboy, Grandmaster Flash, Tony Hadley of Spandau Ballet, Tony Lewis of the Outfield, Patty Smythe and Scandal, Lita Ford, Midnight Star, The Jets, The Motels, Big Country, Katrina from Katrina and the Waves, Annabelle from Bow Wow Wow, oh my gosh, can you believe that list? And everybody's favorite tribute band, Jesse's Girl. Every night on the ship is an amazing theme night, and all your drinks, including premium alcohol beverages, are included. And if you book with the promo code STUCK, you get a $200 cabin credit. Don't wait. Book today and relive the 80s with Spearsy and me on board the 80s cruise. Find out more at www.the80scruise.com. Now on with the show. Travel back in time to the 80s. Reliving the pop culture. I want my MTV. I want my MTV. The lingo. 30 inches of thigh slapping, blood pumping, nuclear brain damage. And the love. Casey, could you please play Waiting for a Girl Like You? Because just like you, we're stuck in the 80s. Can you say stuck in the 80s? Hey, hey, welcome to Stuck in the 80s. It's your host, Steve Spears. And Brad in Hollywood, baby. <laughs> and today, we're going to seize the day and pit the summer movie blockbusters of 1979 versus the summer blockbusters of 1989. Seize the day. Gather you rosebuds while ye may. Steve, Stuck in the 80s is a member of the CLNS Podcast Network. You can find our podcast on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, Spotify, and the CLNS Media mobile app. And don't forget to listen to our podcast on the CLNS Media website. You can find it at clnsmedia.com. And as always, if you like the show, share the links on social media or go on to iTunes or Google Play or your preferred podcast platform and write a review. Say what you think. Please, positive thoughts only. Uh, and don't forget to like our page on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Should have been out there sailing with us today, Bernie. Sun was fabulous. Wind was fabulous. We had a great time. Oh, hi, guys. Mwah. Hi. Love you, darling. Just love you. So summer is basically upon us. We're in a summer movie frame of mind today. It's true. It's true. Uh, you know what, Steve? Actually, last night, uh, Katie and I went to see um, the remake of Dirty Rotten Scoundrels. What's, what's it called? It's, it's called The Hustle. Which is like okay, uh, I was I, I was sad that they didn't actually use the song "The Hustle" anywhere in the movie because that would have made me smile. <laughs> How was it? Uh, it's probably earning its reputation on Rotten Tomatoes right now. Where I think it's in the low thirties, maybe high twenties. <laughs> it's it's not great. It's not great. I won't say I hated it. I, there are things to enjoy in it. Is it a fourteen dollar ticket? No, if it was included in your cable package as a VOD offering and you had nothing else going on, you know, it's not terrible. It has some moments. I feel like they wasted Anne Hathaway completely in the picture. Do they adequately represent and, and redo the Oklahoma scene? Ah, oh, Oklahoma, Oklahoma, Oklahoma. <laughs> That was one of my big disappointments because they do a version of that scene, but instead the guy's from Texas. Oh. Nobody goes no. running around a room yelling, Texas, Texas, Texas. It's not funny. <laughs> it's not funny at all. So here's the idea for this week's show. It is now summer, and Brad was driving home the other day in his car, and he called me uh, during his what hour-long commute. That's about an hour, sometime, yeah. Yeah, as you sometimes do. And and we shoot the shit and we talk about you know what we've been up to. But we also sometimes talk about podcast ideas. And we realized that Memorial Day weekend was upon us. And we started, we started casting our minds back to summer movie seasons in the 80s. Days of yore, as we do from yeah. time to time on this podcast. 
Right. And, you know, just what it was like to have a summer in the 80s when you just had so much fewer responsibilities and no life-threatening illnesses. <laughs> and <laughs> Something to share with the class, Steve? Yeah. <laughs> we're, all, we're all one prime rib dinner away from having the vice president take over. But <laughs> um, we came up with this idea of 1989 had so many great movies. And then I thought, well, what about 1979? We, don't, we, we rarely ever talk about years just outside the 80s. Uh, except when it's convenient to us, yeah. <laughs> Which, and today is going to be one of those days. But I don't want it to be too heavy. I don't, I don't want – sometimes the show feels like it's a, a thesis defense, and I don't want it to be that way. So it's going to be more of a casual chat, more like we're sitting at a bar uh, downing some beers. Or maybe at the beach. You know, with our toes in the sand. Right. You've got flip-flops. You know, we've got sunscreen. We've got uh, Kokomo by the Beach Boys playing, you know, for the ultimate ironic irony. And so we thought, okay, here's what we're going to do. Brad's going to defend the summer movies of 1989. And then I'm going to defend the summer movies of 1979. And we're going to see if we can crown a winner. So you're, really you're no... conceding already. Is that what you're saying? You've already conceded. Yeah. Well, what I'm saying, uh, there are no winners on Stuck in the 80s, only losers. Oh. <laughs> so... <laughs> point, point taken. Point taken. So, so Brad, I'm going to let you get started. You give me your number five movie from the summer of 1989. We'll do our top five each. Okay. Before we start, I want to just define my terms a little bit here. As part of my thesis defense, it's not a thesis defense. To me, a summer movie is... First and foremost has to be entertaining and fun. So I'm going to tend towards more comedy and more action in my list. And I know that I'm going to leave some things out, Steve, that are going to make you upset. And we'll get to those things. But I'm going to start with my number five. My number, Having set the table, my number five summer movie for 1989 is a movie in which Jonathan Silverman and Andrew McCarthy's boss die. It's Weekend at Bernie's. You sure these figures are accurate? Yes. Positive. Yes, sir, Mr. Lomax. Mr. Lomax. <sighs> Bernie. Hmm? Call me Bernie. That's a great pick. That's I will watch this pick. pretty much any time it's on. It's stupid fun, and that's kind of what I'm looking for in the summer movie. You know what's funny? I'm, I'm watching... I, I'm in between TV shows. I'm trying to find a new TV show to binge lately. Okay. And uh, I'm, I'm going to come back to, to Weekend and Bernie's here in 12 seconds. I found this TV show on Netflix that I guess ran on cable for about six seasons called Royal Pains. Did you ever see okay. it? Okay. No, never heard of it. it it's got, I'm watching like uh, – it's about like a uh, concierge doctor in the Hamptons. Okay. It's, it's like a com it's like a medical comedy kind of thing. But I'm watching it and it's like eh, second or third episode of the very first season. And who appears as the evil dad? Andrew McCarthy. Oh my gosh. Wait, he can't play that character. He can play evil. And, and he just he comes across as such a dick. Huh. He's only on the screen for maybe, you know, forty five seconds a minute. And I'm but I'm sure we're gonna see him again. It's just, yeah. you know. Just setting but the table. I just I was shocked. I didn't see that coming at all. At all. I'm going to counter your number five. Okay. What do you got? First of all, I'm going to set my, t my terms and what I'm measuring stuff by. First of all, I think we should say that we're picking movies that were released between Memorial Day and Labor Day. That's what qualifies them as being a summer movie. So it may not be a movie about the summer. But no, it sir. At least in the summer. That's yeah. a movie that yeah, you no, should sir. have gone to see in the summer in the movie theater. Right. Now, and I will also concede that for the most part, my 1979 movies, I did not see in movie theaters because I would have been too young because most of them are rated R. So, <laughs> so I would have seen these on HBO for the most part. Number five, a movie I bet you've never heard of, Over the Edge. Well, how about it, kid? You know, you could really use a break. Why don't you give me a name? You guys got a lot of laws, right? Let me tell you something. I only got one law. A kid who tells on another kid is a dead kid. Well, that's a good rule, kid. That's right. 
It'll serve you well in jail someday. Damn straight. Huh? 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 Uh, yeah. This is 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 this the arm wrestling movie? No, that's over the top. Oh no, I've Jeez. never heard of this. So seventy nine. This is Matt Dillon's debut film. It's about a bunch of kids in New Granada, Colorado, who lived in like a one of those newly planned suburb communities, but there's nothing for them to do. So they end up turning to like petty crime and drugs and sex to, to entertain themselves. And by the end of the movie, they practically burned down the school. But it's got this amazing soundtrack featuring Cheap Trick, The Cars, The Ramones, Van Halen. It is... Just one of those. I don't want to say it's a fun movie. It's it's sad, <laughs> yeah. But but it. I remember catching it on HBO. And I remember ta- putting it on taping it, putting it on VHS tape, and watching it all the time. And then I remember Bill Simmons, the columnist who I don't know where he is anymore. But at the t- I wanted once upon a time he worked for ESPN and he wrote a column talking about how much how over the edge was this amazing teen movie that got no got no uh, credit for its hmm. genius. So that's that is my number five. So I mean, yes, yes, you haven't seen it. Good luck trying to find it. Uh, maybe it's out there on DVD. If it is, I give you the four-star Spearsy guarantee that it's worth your time and money. Okay, you ready? Let's okay. hear Brad's number four. Okay, so let me just say that unlike Steve's list, my list is not just hipster stuff that no one's heard of. These are movies <laughs> that actually made money and were popular in their time. Number four, I give you uh, the plot summary of this one is Foreigners Abuse Their Diplomatic Immunity. That's right. It's Lethal Weapon 2. Police, open up. How do I know it's the police? After I shoot you through the door, you can examine the bullet. Open up. That was easy. Don't you want to see a badge? Don't do that again. Okay, let me see a badge. Shut up. Okay, I get it. Bad cop, good cop. Shut up. Okay, okay, okay. Bad cop, bad cop. I got it. I I don't normally love sequels, but this is a good one. It really is. This is the last good sequel, I think, of Lethal Weapon. I think they get a little silly after Joe this. Joe Pesci in this one, or is he not until three? Joe Pesci shows up in this one, and he's really good in this one, which is why they brought him in for three, which is not good. Right. Okay. I remember, I'm remembering correctly. A little bit of Old Bay seasoning is good, but if you make a dish that's all Old Bay seasoning, your mouth is on fire and you hate yourself. Can I have an aside here again? Sure. <laughs> um, Dave Augie August, who is like a loyal listener to the show, supposedly puts Old Bay on everything. Like ice cream, scrambled eggs, pizza, everything. I, I use it in a lot of things. Mainly I use it in a lot of stuff when I'm barbecuing. I call it the secret ingredient, but it's not really that secret. Yeah. But yeah, so but ice, uh, ice cream? Ice cream, no. No. <laughs> Augie, you're you're just wrong. You're just full of shit. <laughs> I can't say that. He's looking for a Tron arcade machine for me, so I, I, I got to be nice. And be somewhat nice. I will try it. You're... I will try it on my... <laughs> <laughs> Your flavor combination surprised me, Mr. August. Yes. I find it to be a, quite a head turner. <laughs> yeah. So I, this okay. is so back to my movie. This is just it's a great buddy movie. It's a great buddy cop movie. Again, this a classic kind of trope con- construction and it's got a really attractive woman in it for uh, Mel Gibson to hang out with and it's got the bad guy from Bill and Ted's in it and it's just it's fantastic. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> the bad guy from Bill and Ted. It's just like, there's a career move. You know that, that you talk about a character actor. He's that. Okay, here we go. Number four for me, and you're probably right about me picking all the hipster. You're such a favorite. hipster, Spearsy. <laughs> such a hipster. <laughs> because my number four is being there. Mr. Garner, do you agree with Ben, or do you think we can stimulate growth through temporary incentives? As long as the roots are not severed, all is well, and all will be well in the garden. In the garden? Yes. In a garden, growth has its season. First comes spring and summer, but then we have fall and winter. And then we get spring and summer again. Spring and summer? Yes. <clears throat> then fall and winter? Yes. I think what our insightful young friend is saying is that we welcome the inevitable 
seasons of nature, but we're upset by the seasons of our economy. Yes. Now, come on. You love this movie. I know you do. Uh, okay. You got me there, Spirsy. This is a great choice. <laughs> this is, of course, the Peter Sellers masterpiece about the simple-minded servant named Chauncey whose uh, advice about gardening is mistaken as genius by a powerful businessman who has the ear of a president. Uh, I remember watching this with my dad and <laughs> the whole scene where, you know, I like to watch. I like to watch. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's the quote from this movie everybody knows, right? Yeah, yeah. It's it's a great movie. I I don't know why I don't own this. It it still makes the rounds. You'll see it on like just regular TV from here to there. I don't know. Maybe it's not rated R, but I, I'm 99% sure I was not taken to see this in the movie theater. So... No. My dad was a huge Peter Sellers fan. He loved all the Pink Panther movies. So I know I was taken to all of those, but being there, I think, is something we experienced later on in the 80s. Slipped through the cracks, okay. as it were. <laughs> Your turn for number three. Okay, number three. I'm, I'm building my case here. I'm building the wall of 1989 here one brick at a time. No one is more surprised than me to be defending 1989 because I would – honestly, when we started talking about this topic, I'm like, oh, there's, there's not going to be any good movies that summer. It's ridiculous. But this movie is number three on my list, which tells you how much power there is in this summer. Number three, I give you the granddaddy of the modern superhero movie, 1989's Batman. Let me tell you about this guy I know, Jack. Mean kid. Bad seed. Hurt people. I like them already. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I got to bow to you. That's a great pick. Oh, just, you know, and I know I can get Jen on my side, even though she's not here, just by reminding everyone that Prince did the soundtrack. Yeah. You know, it's, you know, this movie looks better and better as the years go by, and Michael Keaton looks better and better as a Batman given the uh, subsequent choices to replace him. I, it's kind of weird, isn't it, that, that that role has been so difficult to cast well. I really think this sets up the modern superhero movie genre, which, frankly, I think is a little overdone at this point. I've kind of quit going to Just them. a little. I've, you know, people are like, oh, have you seen the last Avengers movie? They're like, no, probably won't. I'm like, what? I'm like, nah, yeah. I just, you know, yeah. it's not that into it. This is just a fun movie. And I, I think at the time, people thought, Michael Keaton is Batman? Really? But I think he pulls it off. It's almost more important that the actor who plays the part is a better Bruce Wayne than than a Batman. Uh, and I know that's like the opposite way of thinking. That's that's a really but, good observation, Steve. I like that. Because I don't think Ben Affleck could ever be Bruce Wayne. Could he be Batman? Sure. But it's the hard part is being Bruce Wayne. The hard part is being yourself, Brad. Oh, man. Oh, you know, I just I really love learning a lesson when we do podcasts. And I, I feel like a little warm fuzziness now. And that's one to grow on. <laughs> yeah. Let the warm fuzziness continue with my number three pick. Meatballs. It just doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. I tell you, it just doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. Even if we win, if we win, ha! Even if we win, even if we play so far over our heads that our noses bleed for a week to ten days, even if God in heaven above comes down and points his hand at our side of the field, even if every man, woman, and child held hands together. Prayed for us to win, it just wouldn't matter because all the really good looking girls would still go out with the guys from Mohawk because they got all the money. <laughs> it just doesn't matter if we win or we lose. Curse you, Steve Spears. This, this, movie, <laughs> this movie's often mistaken for an 80s movie because it was released, it was released in 79 in Canada, I believe. And I, it may have made its U.S. theatrical release in in 1980, but regardless, it, it qualifies as a 1979 movie. It made Bill Murray a star, like, boom, right off the shelf. Yeah. And it helped launch the directing career of uh, Ivan Reitman. And Chris Makepeace, too, man. <laughs> Chris Makepeace. Where would the world be today without Chris Makepeace? All the way to the I top. Ask you He's that. going all the way to the top. 
<laughs> yeah. And is there anyone our age who doesn't know the CIT song? Oh. Uh, you know? Let's hear a little bit of we that. We are the CIT, so, so pity us. The kids are brats, the Everyone. food is hideous. It's uh, just doesn't matter, Steve. It just doesn't matter. <laughs> So if that's my number three pick, you got to wonder what my two and ones are. I'm, but we're going to have to wait to hear what the Brad's number two pick is for the summer movie of 1989. Okay. Number three, I said, was the modern superhero movie, the prototype. Number two, I think, is the, again, I'm going to use this word I like to use a lot. It's the canonical romantic comedy of the last hundred years, When Harry Met Sally. Which one am I? You're the worst kind. You're high maintenance, but you think you're low maintenance. I don't see that. You don't see that? Waiter, I'll begin with the house salad, but I don't want the regular dressing. I'll have the balsamic vinegar and oil, but on the side. And then the salmon with the mustard sauce, but I want the mustard sauce on the side. On the side is a very big thing for you. Well, I just want it the way I want it. I know. High maintenance. Oh, I'm so glad you picked this one. I would have really been sad if you didn't. It's. I love this movie. It ticks all the boxes. For a summer movie, It's. it's funny. A great date movie. There's nothing that says summer like summer romance. So you got to have a movie to take your, you know, your newfound sweetie to. I think this also has stood the test of time. Maybe not so much in the characterizations and some of the jokes about, you know, Ted Kennedy died. Or like, yeah, actually, he did die. Uh, <laughs> but I think that the setup is so. It is. Didn't think about that. This is a blueprint for every romantic comedy that's made since. Then. Yeah, I remember when this came out. I had just started my first full-time job after college. And so I was back in Tampa Bay and the newspaper came and the entertainment supplement for that Friday, the cover was when Harry met Sally. And I just, I looked at it, I read the review and I'm like, I have got to see this movie like immediately. And I, I know I saw it in the theaters like days later. Did you go alone? <laughs> I'm sure I did. <laughs> I didn't have a girlfriend. I didn't have a girlfriend for like 1989 through 1993. <laughs> it was like it's a stretch that I would only eclipse in, in recent years. <laughs> Eve's relationship desert. But it is, it is fantastic. Do you remember seeing it? Did you see it in a the theater? Uh, I, uh, I don't know that I did, honestly, Steve. How many times have you seen it since then, though? Yeah, a lot. <laughs> a lot. I know I have this on DVD, and I, I and it's it's one of the perfect uh, New Year's Eve movies, by the way. Especially when you're <laughs> when you're alone eating with your Malamars. So, <laughs> mm. okay, here we go. We, we're, we're we're on the uh, downward slope here. We're on the <laughs> down, we're on something something sloping down. It could be my energy level. Uh, number two for me, uh, appropriately, Rocky two. You look so tired. Why don't you go get some sleep? Oh, no, no, I feel great. I feel great. Listen, I've been thinking, if you don't want me mixing with Creed no more, we'll make out some other kind of way, you know? There's one thing I want you to do for me. What? Come here. What? Win. Win. What are we waiting for? Take this! Brad, I would say that this is probably the... Well, I'm going to... I'm going to hit myself for saying this, but I think this might be the best of all Rocky films. Um, I mean, you could make that argument. I, I, it's not my favorite. My favorite is three, but I think, yeah. you know, it, it's it sets the tone for all the ones to come. I mean, the, you know, the first Rocky movie, when you go back and watch that, it's so different. It drags. A little bit. A little <laughs> bit. Well, it's also a product of another time, but this is a good pick for your number two. It's got two in the name. Some symmetry there. Yeah, yeah. Well, plus it was the first – it sets up the pattern, as you said, for future Rocky, Rocky movies where the sequel is set like two minutes into the ending of the previous movie. Right. So as we begin Rocky II, we're still, we're still seeing the end of Rocky I. And that pattern would repeat itself for the next several films. It would – for definitely for number three and for four. Yeah. But, uh, just goes right into the next one. Yeah, yeah. I haven't seen any of them since then, but – I just I just like the well what are we waiting for? <laughs> just, I mean, okay, what is your number one pick as a summer movie released in nineteen eighty nine? Okay, my number one pick, this is one of my favorite series. This is the the last of the trilogy, one of my favorite series. It stars two generations of action heroes. You got Sean Connery and Harrison Ford 
in, dare I say, the perfect summer blockbuster. It's got something for everybody. I give you Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Junior! I've lost him. And I never told him anything. I just wasn't ready, Marcus. Five minutes would have been enough. Wow. You know, just I just want to do the slow clap for you right <laughs> here, you know. Henry, the man that is, is a- mightier. <laughs> it's like... You know, I like I like the Austrian way better. Me too. <laughs> there, it's, there's so many. <clears throat> Und this is how we say goodbye in Germany. <laughs> I, I quote this, or no ticket. I mean, I can quote this movie all day uh, long. Yeah, my son and I do too. Papers. Oh yes, uh, morning edition. Run. <laughs> <laughs> no ticket. Oh my god. Did you see Kingdom of the Crystal Skull? I did. I did not. I did not. So is it as bad as people say? Um it's pretty silly. It is to Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade what the hustle is to Dirty Rotten Scoundrels. Oh, a, Jesus. A pale imitation. Bring it all back. A pale imitation with a few jokes borrowed for old time's sake. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm glad I didn't see it. I it's every once in a while it's on and I'm just like, nope. To me, the Last Crusade, I love the way it ends, and it's just like, as far as I'm concerned, that franchise is wrapped up. Yep. I don't care if I star in the next Indiana Jones. I'm not going to watch it. Actually, I would really... I'd pay money to see that. Watch it. <laughs> Nobody wants to see a chubby Spearsy running around with a, any sort of... The amount of sweating alone would just be intolerable. Will there be so, whips? Okay. <laughs> I do not know. I would bet yes. Here we go. Number one movie from 1979. I think a lot of people have forgotten about this one and how great it is. I give you Breaking Away. You know what really gets me, though? I mean, here I am. I got to live in this stinking town. And I got to read in the newspapers about some hotshot kid, new star of the college team. Every year is going to be a new one. Every year is never going to be me. I'm just going to be Mike. 20-year-old Mike. 30-year-old Mike. Oh, mean old man, Mike. These college kids out here, they're never going to get old. They're out of shape. Because new ones come along every year. They're going to keep calling us cutters. them is just a dirty word me is just something else i never got a chance to be come on brad come on so steve you're gonna sit there with a straight face and tell me a movie about some weirdo fringy euro trash sport is the number one movie that's the best you can do a cycling movie this that should appeal to you alone. Well, I come on, I, I know, say it, I know. say you love it. I, oh, I love this movie. Don't get me wrong, but this is the best you can muster up for 1979. I I win, I win. You probably do win, but, but I, I do love this movie. My case. Oh my gosh, it's so good. <laughs> yeah. And maybe I ranked it too high, but refund. If you haven't seen it, then you really are missing out. If you haven't seen it in a long time, well, then you're really missing out. It's one of my all-time favorite movies. It follows a group of four male teenagers in Bloomington, Indiana, uh, who recently graduated from high school and then kind of find like they're strangers in their own hometown, which is by, you know, Bloomington, Indiana is home of Indiana University. They're sort of, you know, looked down upon. They're like the family of what they call the cutters. The people that work in the quarries, blue right? people who, stone who cut- work in the quarries. Right. Stone cutters, yeah. Yeah. So it starred Dennis Christopher, Dennis Quaid, Daniel Stern, Jackie Earl Haley, uh, Barbara Berry, Paul Dooley, the great Paul oh, Dooley, Paul and Dooley. Robin Douglas. Yeah, amazing, amazing. It was ranked eighth in the uh, list of America's 100 most inspiring movies by AFI. You know, Steve, this isn't even and, the best uh, sports movie set in Indiana. <laughs> 
What are you gonna say, Hoosiers? Yes. Hello. No, no. Oh, there's no. a better sports I'll movie take than Breaking Away. Really? No. <laughs> come on. At the end, I'll make it. Oh, come on. No, no. I just watched Hoosiers the other day, and there's 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 some enti- there's entire segments of that movie that make no sense whatsoever. And you cry every so. time when they win that game. You cry I every time. I actually don't cry. I actually have never cried at Hoosiers. That that should show you a how how little I care about basketball. It's, and, it's not about uh, the math. I love I'll cry, those kids. I cried breaking away, though. That's for sure. Well, it's just because they had to so, tape him to the bike. It scares you to death, doesn't it? <laughs> it's funny. I was. Uh, I listened to the Mark Marin podcast pretty religiously. Okay. WTF is what it's called, and and you know that because we talk about it all the time. Yeah, yeah. And if I see a really good episode, I always I tell you, and you you listen to that one. Dennis Quaid was just on uh, within the last couple of weeks, and he talked a lot about breaking away. And, and how much fun it was to film. I have to listen to and, that. Yeah, it's that. If you've never listened to a uh, Mark Maron podcast, check out the one with Dennis Quaid. He talks a lot about the right stuff, a lot about that. He talks a lot about uh, Tombstone. Not Tombstone. He was in uh, White Earp. Oh, okay. But yeah. uh, he was actually offered a spot in Tombstone as well. But it's a really good one. He spins a great story, and it's worth seeing. Today's episode of Stuck in the 80s is sponsored by a brand new partner. It's Blue Chew. Right now, everyone's going, "Uh uh-oh, Spears is going to go all TMI on us. Hey, let me shake that notion from your head. We're all part of the 80s nation, and for some of us, maybe that means you think you left your best sex days back in the days of feathered haircuts and acid wash jeans, but it doesn't have to be that way. Hopefully by now, you've gotten over the whole dread of the acronym ED. If not, that's where BlueChew.com comes in. Blue Chew brings you the first chewable with the same FDA-approved active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis so you know that they work. You can take them anytime, day or night, even on a full stomach, and since they're chewable, they work up to twice as fast as a regular pill. Let me dispel with the mystery here. I use Viagra. I have since before I even started the podcast, but now I'm a happy fan of Blue Chew. I'm here to tell you there's no reason to be ashamed of it. There's no stigma with Blue Chew. You just go to their website Answer some quick questions about your lifestyle and health, and Blue Chew ships straight to your door in a discreet package. No doctor visits, no waiting at the pharmacy, and best of all, no more awkwardness. And because they're made in the USA and because Blue Chew prepares and ships direct, they're cheaper than a pharmacy. Right now, we've got a special deal for our listeners. Visit BlueChew.com and get your first shipment free when you use our special promo code STUCK. You pay just $5 shipping. Again, that's B-L-U-E-Chew.com, promo code STUCK, to try it for free. Blue Chew is the better, cheaper, faster choice, and we thank them for sponsoring the podcast. Okay, after hearing your top five and my top five, I think a lot of people are leaning in your direction. They want to vote for you, and I understand that, but I want to throw it into overtime. Let's just throw down a movie name, that was also released in our respective summer. I'm going to start with The In-Laws. Dead Poet Society. Escape from Alcatraz. Uncle Buck. Moonraker. <laughs> Are you joking me? Honey, I shrunk the kids. <laughs> the Amityville Horror. Star Trek V, The Final Frontier. Oh, I need my pain. I want my pain. Damn it, Bones, you're a doctor. You know, the pain and guilt can't be taken away with a wave of a magic wand. They're the things we carry with us, the things that make us who we are. We lose them, we lose ourselves. I don't want my pain taken away. I need my pain. Oh, damn you. Uh, I'll counter with North Dallas 40. Ooh, that's a good one. License to Kill, a better Bond movie. <laughs> it's a lot better. Uh, Life of Brian. What's so uh, funny about Biggest Dickus? What is a joke name, sir? Uh, do the right thing. Okay, I'm going to give you my closer right now. You ready? Uh-huh. Alien. Oh, man, that's a good one. I would counter with The Abyss, but that's just outside the summer season. That was like the weekend after Labor Day. I'll let you have it. That's a good one. I love The Abyss. Yeah. And it kind of lines up nicely with Alien. Yeah. So There were other movies uh, 79 gave us that weren't in the summer. Uh, Mad Max, The Warriors, The Jerk were all great 1979 movies that I'll watch anytime they're on. Yeah. I made a list of all the sequels that I could find in 1989. I mean, it is the year of the sequel. You got Raiders 3, Ghostbusters 2. I didn't even mention Back to the Future 2. What's wrong, McFly? 
chicken. But then you've also got, you know, Halloween 5, Nightmare on Elm Street 5, Friday the 13th Part 8, Fright Night 2, Police Academy 6, Eddie and the Cruisers 2, The Fly 2, oh my God. Karate Kid 3, and is Henry V the sequel? <laughs> no. Do we count Shakespearean sequels? <laughs> No. <laughs> I do I, I do really like that version with Kenneth Braga. Proclaim it, Westmoreland, through my host, that he which hath no stomach to this fight, let him depart. His passport shall be made, and grounds for convoy put into his purse. We would not die in that man's company that fears his fellowship to die with us. Here's one thing I think we can both agree on. The Seggies. What's up? happening hot stuff ah by the sound of the gong it must be time for mystery movie moment uh, we'll play a piece a slice a razor thin wafer mint size clip of a movie from the 80s not 79 i promise <laughs> and if you get it right you're entered into the pool for some uh some cool swaggerino pay attention here was the clip from the last time we did this my invention check it out your invention? Yes. Sunglasses? More than that. They're edible. Check it out. You're insane! Oh, come on. Taste it. They're delicious. Yep, that's two of a kind. A kind of a dog of a movie with uh, Olivia Newton-John and John Travolta. Sort of like their little reunion after Greece. It's got a good theme song to it. But... Uh, I think probably a lot of people got it right by figuring out, okay, that's obviously Olivia Newton-John, and that's obviously John Travolta. Let's Google and see how many movies they did together, and it's a total of, I think, two. Yeah. Only one of which is in the 80s. So, so therefore, we have some winners. We do. Brad, why don't you do the honors? I'm so pleased that this week I get to read some names. Good job, listeners. You guys rock. Winners this week include Joe Mello, DJ and Clinton, Mark Graham, Sean Ryland, Stephen Halifax, Dan and McDonough, Chuck Coverley from New Jersey, and Peter Ryan in Montreal. Pay attention. Here's this week's mystery clip. The only reason people are nice to me is because I have more money than God. If you know it, email us at podcast at satedies.com and tune in next week or soon or maybe next month. Next month. And find out if you're a winner. <laughs> Ah, uh, the mystical refrain that is, name that 80s tune. Same spiel here, except for we're going to do a song. Guess the song in question, and again, entered into the pool for some fun stuff. What do you, you still have bottle openers? Did you have to order some new ones? They're on their way. I just ordered them this weekend, so. You got different kinds now, right? I did. I did. I got, you know, because I'm mainly thinking of myself. I got ones that I can put in an envelope instead of having to put in a box. Because if I can just drop it in an envelope and put some stamps on it, it's a lot easier for me to send it. Yeah. Okay. So there we go. New swag. Yeah. I have yeah. I'm trying to think if I have anything to give away. <laughs> I got these blue chewable things I could give away. <laughs> Probably shouldn't do that though. I don't think you're supposed to ship those without uh, permission from the government though. Yeah. That's that's my understanding as well. Uh here we go. Here's the clip from the last time we did this. That's The Glory of Love by Peter Cetera. song has been on my mind a lot lately my friend oh my gosh this is another very powerful earworm yeah it is I hard to chase it a around. man who will fight for your honor i remember you were annoyed when i first picked it and i started texting you the lyrics and that really sent you over the edge. <sighs> karate kid 2 I, you know how do we feel about karate kid 2 i like it i love karate kid 2 i like it a lot okay live or die man die Wrong. Karate Kid Three. I'll, I'll I'll sit through that because um, I don't think I've ever seen Karate Kid Three. Where I part ways is when they go to the next Karate Kid and it's Hillary Swank. Yeah, 
then I then I kind of like okay. I mean, it, it's not it has nothing to do with the fact. I mean, she's a fantastic actress. I just you know just not your bag, baby. Enough times to the well. Yeah. Well, just enough times to the well. What they needed to do is set it aside so we could have Cobra Kai. Yes. I have not started watching season two yet. Have you? No, I think that's next up. We just finished watching Glow, so season two. So I think we'll be hitting Cobra Kai I'm, two here pretty soon. I'm waiting for the girlfriend to come here. She's as you listen to the show, she'll probably actually be here for Memorial Day weekend. And uh, on our list of things to do is to. She never saw the season one of Cobra Kai. Oh, it's so good. It can be done fairly quickly because I think there are half hour episodes. There's only ten episodes, so five hours. So we'll go through that. And maybe we'll start on season two. I don't know. I don't know if there'll be enough time. So that's who I was thinking about when I picked Glory of Love, though. Really? So that's shocking. <laughs> I know. It's like people are like, oh, I miss Sad Spearsy. I'm like, no, no, I don't. <laughs> no, we're happy that Spearsy is happy, and they are too if they think so, about it for a second. Yeah, I'm sure I'll still have my down days where like work is killing my soul and stuff like that, and. And I can't find the words to do a podcast correctly, and so there'll still be some some Eeyore moments in the future. But but at least uh, right now, you know, I am a man who will fight for <laughs> her honor. Anyway, uh, read some of the winners. Winners this week include Chris living on the air in Cincinnati, Adams, Ann in NorCal, DJ and Clinton, Jesse El Gato Grande Smith, John in Dallas, Dave in Oxford, Sean Ryland, Bonnie Spruan from the 80s Cruise, Greg and Heather in Kissimmee, Joseph Purdue, Lee in the UK, Jay White in Raleigh, North Carolina, Tim in Totesuck, Michael Mockrock Hayes, Jeremy and Terry in St. Pete, Alan Titus, Eric in Buffalo, Peg Reynolds, Dave Estel, and Jeff Hurst. Okay, my friend, spin the wheel of love, and let's see who gets some swag. Love brokers. Oh, there you go. Someone's got some energy today. You betcha, Red Rider. <laughs> it looks like it's going to land on uh, Sean Ryland. You are this week's uh, extra special winner. Yay. So just uh, call our special line and sing the lyrics to glory of love and you can have some swag no you don't have to do that just send us your postal address and we will send you something off soon in the meantime pay attention here's this week's mystery clip if you know it email us at podcast at sit80s.com and to the next month to find out if you're a winner we'll be right back after this commercial break the centipedes are coming get your fingers moving fast and the spiders out to get you do you think that you can last you can shoot him in the middle, he will only break in two. And the fleas are even faster if you look away and through. See the scorpion a dancing? He can really help you score. But the centipede's immortal keeps coming back for more. Centipede is from Atari and it's faster than a jet. If you're looking for some action, it's the game you gotta get. Centipede! Free, free, free for Atari! Why do I stand up here? Anybody? To feel taller. No! Thank you for playing, Mr. Dalton. I stand upon my desk to remind myself that we must constantly look at things in a different way. See, the world looks very different from up here. You don't believe me? Come see for yourselves. Come on. And we're back. We have a few minutes left. I thought, let's uh, re-inaugurate an old tradition here called Please, Please Tell Me Now. Please, please tell me now. Please, please tell me now. So this week we get a letter from Amy in San Francisco, our, our good friend Amy. And uh, Brad, why don't you read the question? Okay. Amy writes, Hey, Brad and Steve, whether we feel it or not, and whether we have teenagers or beyond or not, we are roughly at the age that our parents were when they dismissed our taste. So I guess the premise of my question would be, what song or group were your parents absolutely right about when they said it was just noise? (laughs) Oh, man. My parents really hated when I was into punk rock. Yeah. Yeah. But I still would defend my, my, my. I would defend it. I would. I would not say they were right about that. Yeah. What What they might have been right about was Kiss, <laughs> which I, as a preteen, that was my favorite band. And looking back, yeah, they might have been right about Kiss <laughs> being noise. <laughs> uh, what What uh, What band or group uh, jumps to your head? Uh, you know, I I having a hard time coming up with one. My parents were pretty good about letting me listen to my music. And I remember specifically, I was in Oklahoma City with my mom. And if I wanted like anything that wasn't kind of top 40 music, I had to buy it 
at a record store in Oklahoma City because we just didn't have anything like that out in Weatherbury. So I was at Sound Warehouse and I bought a copy of Devo's first album, Are We Not Men, We Are Devo, on cassette, right? And my mom was like, oh, if you want to listen to that in the car, okay. And I, like, I'd never heard it. I don't know what it was. So I put it on and I'll never forget this. The song Mongoloid comes on and my mom turns it down and looks at me and says, are they singing about somebody with Down syndrome? And I'm like, <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> like, she didn't make you turn it off, but she was like asking me all these questions. I'm like, well, that was weird. So it was it was interesting to me that, you know, she was paying as much attention to it as she was because, you know, like when my kids turn on want to listen to music, I just kind of tune it out. Yeah. I, I do remember driving around with my dad one time and I put on Purple Rain yeah. on cassette and it was uh, Let's Go Crazy, which he loved all the way up until Prince's guitar solo. And then he was like, well, I love the, the song all the way up till here, but this is just garbage now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, well, that's great. It's like, really, he's a great guitar player. Said, no, no, he's really not. I'm like, okay. Uh, okay. You must be right. I'm sure you so, must be right. So, yeah. I'm sorry, I'm sure Amy. I didn't answer right. your question, but that's because I'm a bad person. Yeah. You are a bad person. But that's okay. Hey, who do you think won the battle? Was it 1979 or 1989? Uh, let us Brad, know via email. Brad, and, uh, Brad, <laughs> Brad. 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 <laughs> it was probably Brad. And... <laughs> And as always, if you have a PBTMN question, you can always feel free to email us as well. In the meantime, Brad and I will be right here in the beach sipping our, uh, I guess it's the 80s, so it's Michelob Light, mm. while we stare aimlessly into the surf because we're hopelessly stuck in the 80s. Stuck in the 80s is a member of the CLNS Media Network. Special thanks to Check Battery Daily for our theme music. And don't forget to subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, or the CLNS Media mobile app. So let's, um, how do you want to do this? Do you want to do like your number five, nine, my number let's five? Do, yeah, let's alternate. Let's alternate. Okay. So let me get started. Okay. Oh, no, wait. No, oh, wait. I'll let you get started. Oh, so Brad, okay. I'm, no, wait. You're going to delete all this anyway. Yeah.